Welcome back. This is Dan Havey with CF Ninja Hacks. And in this video today, we are answering a question from Jenny in um, Catherine Jones's design hacking group. And she said, I'd really like to, um, I really like there to be a hover function or mouse over that changes the image to the contents of the package, sort of like a reveal from packaging to the content. And what she's really looking for is as you hover over an image to have another image appear in its place. So that's what we did here is we got this one here of Russell. And then we have a second one here, uh, just some icons. It doesn't really matter what you put in here. You got to make sure though that the images are the same size. And then the same thing down here. Now on this top one, we do a mouse over, mouse in, mouse out, mouse leave, whatever the heck it is, I forget. Uh, we do that function in here. Here we do a callback. And this one actually is my favorite one. And I'll show you all the code here in a second. Here we are just using an image tag. And we are changing out the source of that image tag. And on the fourth one here, we are just changing out the background image. But in this case here, we're using pretty much all just CSS. So let's just jump into the code and take a look at this. So the first two here, I wrote out by putting it into the tracking code. And you'd come to your settings and tracking code right here. I got a little bookmarklet I built for myself to open it up more easily. And the second two we built as uh, custom JavaScript HTML elements. The nice thing about these two is that they use the native built-in uh, ClickFunnels image elements. So we'll just click on this and we'll show you that. So we just got our regular old image element here. In this case here, we have the same, but what we're doing on the first one is we have one image that we are hiding. So we have one image, that starts off um, showing on the screen and the other one that we uh, start off having it hidden. So I will go back in and hide that element again. But again, it's just two, two image el elements just sitting one on top of the other. And so now let's just take a look at the tracking code. So again, this is for the top one here. I just called this a mouse function. And uh, I'll just move this down so it's kind of out of the way. And all we're saying here is we have our two images. So these are the CSS ID selectors for both of the images. So let me come back in here again and we can come up to settings and we would come down to the CSS or down to the hashtag down here in the bottom right hand corner and we pull out the CSS ID selector. And then we would take that back into our code. And of course we got to grab it for both of the elements. Now what you're going to see here is I put both of the elements in the first one here for mouse over or for mouse leave. And in fact, now I think about it, I actually only would need the second one for mouse leave. Let me take that out because what this is saying is as long as the mouse is over the element, we need to hide the first element and show the second. But what's going to happen is as soon as we mouse over that and it hides the first one and shows the second one, we're no longer mousing over the first one anymore. And so as soon as you moused over it, it would basically toggle back and forth very quickly. And so you don't want that because it's going to continue to hide and show it. So what I'm saying is, is once you mouse over the first one, it will show the second one. But as long as you keep your mouse over that second one, it will keep this function running the whole time until you pull your mouse away. So now in this case here, what we have is so again, we're going to hide the first one and then show the second one. Now in the second case here, if what I'm thinking and how I changed it here is right, all this is going to say is once we mouse off that second image, which should stay on the screen the entire time once you mouse over the first one, then we're going to do the exact opposite set. We're going to show the first image and hide the second image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this and we'll go back onto that preview page just to see if I'm right about that, where I did not need that first identifier for the first image. So let's let it load up here. And yes, I was right on that one. Okay, good. Well, that's slightly less code that you have to put in. But that's part of the thing I don't like about this first one is, you know, it's you got here, what, uh, you know, six, basically, let's just call this six lines of code. Whereas on the one with the callback function, which I like a lot better, 
is you can really get this down to about four lines of code, which I guess is not a huge difference. So what we're looking at on the second one is, and let's come back in here, let's click out, and we're going to come in, same thing, CSS ID selector, and so it's this long thing here with 130 at the end, and we're going to come back into the code, and so that's what you're seeing right here is the code. And so what this is is... First up, it's using a function just like it did up here at the top. Here we did a mouse over function. Here we're doing a hover. Well, hover is essentially the same, slight differences, so essentially the same as doing a mouse over. But, I mean, there are some differences, but it it's essentially does the same thing for what we're doing here. Um, but what we say here then is when we hover over that image element, what we want it to do is take that image element and then the sub, um, the sub, uh, what's the word I'm thinking of? It's basically the element inside of that element. And let me just show you what I mean by that. So let me just click on this and we're going to go to inspect. Okay, so here is our element that we had. So here's our ID for that image. And it ends again in the 130 like we showed before. But now what we have is another image inside of that image. And that's how we're going to notate it right here is that we have the outer element, which is the image wrapper. And then we have the actual image itself. So here on the top, you have your L image wrapper. And down here, you have the actual image. So basically, what it amounts to is there's a box. And inside of the box is where you stick the image is how it works. And, and most ClickFunnels elements work this way, where you have an outer box and then you have the thing inside of that outer box. So that's what we have here. So what we're saying is, once I hover over that image, that what we wanna do, once I hover over the entire outer box of the image, it doesn't matter where you are inside of it, once I hover over that entire outside box, then we want to change the image. And how we wanna change the image here is we wanna change the attribute, and one of the attributes is its source, which is the link to the, uh, to the image itself. And you see right here, we have a link to the first image, but what we want to say is when we come in and we hover over that, that again, that image wrapper, once we hover over it, we want to change this out to what is the actual second image. So every time you come in, you're going to see here it says innovation, whereas if we come over here, it says, it says right here, solution. And solution is the first image, and innovation is the second image. But if we look over here to the left, as I hover over this, you're going to see right up here that this changes. So every time I hover over it, now it says solution, now I hover over it, and I give it a second, it's going to turn purple, and then it's going to change it to innovation. So that's what this code says, is when we hover over it, that put in this image as the source for that image. Now, what we do next is we do what is known as a callback function. And so this callback function essentially says that once we come in and we hover over this, as soon as we stop hovering, run this other function. And the other function just simply says, turn the source of that image back to what the original was in the first place. So that's all it is. You come in, you hover, says change it to what amounts to the second image. And then once you're done hovering, run this other function, run this callback function, and then have it just switch back to the original first image. Now, I guess in this case here, you could come in and you could hover over it. And then as you hover over, it'll change to the second image. And then as you hover out, you could actually have it change to a third image. So that could be interesting as well. So let me actually, let's just... Um, Let's just see about that. Let's see what we can do here. Let me just grab. Well, in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to grab that. I'm going to just click on the image because let me show you. I didn't show you this is how the easiest way to be able to get these image elements or these uh, image URLs is I store everything right inside of ClickFunnels itself. So let's say we're going to grab this one here. So all of your images, you always want to just store right inside of here. So we're going to come in here and any image, we're going to just come down here. We're going to say copy image address. And then we're just going to bounce back out of this. And then let's go into our tracking code. And we'll come down to the bottom. Let me open this up. 
and we will put this in and we will go command V and we will save. Okay, so we come in, we hover over it, it turns it into the light bulb thing. And now when we leave, it's going to give us that third image now. And we go out, it actually gives us a third image. So there's a way actually to be able to do it where you could go from one image to the next. And who knows, you could maybe with a little bit of a little more code, you could just keep moving it back and forth and changing. And But all right, that's it for now. So let me, uh, let's go here. And then the next one we're going to do is where we had to do it inside of a custom JavaScript box. And actually, Erin inside of Catherine's group, she's the one who found the basic code for this. I had to modify it some and figure out how to get it to work with ClickFunnels. But um, we got this all set up here. And again, let me run my little code there. And again, this one is pretty simple because all you're using is that image element. So like we were showing up here before, let me just click on this again, how we have this image inside of this other element. Well, here we basically are creating this image inside of the HTML element. So we have our HTML element and all we're doing is dropping this image code right inside of it. Now here what I found is because there are no boundaries being set by the HTML element, we need to put in what the width of that element has to be. Because otherwise, if you got really huge image, it's just going to blow it up across the screen. So in this case here, we're just going to say we want this to be 400 pixels wide. And otherwise, it's pretty much very similar to the callback in that we we first off, we got to put in our image. In this case here, the first image is the actual first image. And then what it says is on mouse over, what we want to do is change the source to this second image. And what, what this means right here is any time that you see the word this in code like this, especially in jQuery code, anytime you see this, this refers to the element that called it. So in this case here, this would be the equivalent of putting in image. So image or this is exactly the same thing. I'm pretty sure. I might be a little bit wrong on that one. I'll have to triple check that one. But so it says on mouse over. So basically as you move your mouse in, show the second image, and then on mouse out, then go back to the first image. So it said uh, very similar to the, the uh, uh, one above here with the callback. But also you're going to notice here, so here, here we got mouse over and we got mouse leave. Down here, we have on mouse over and on mouse out. Now, I haven't checked it here. We might be able to use on mouse leave. I'm not even sure if there is a function on mouse leave. But you can see here that clearly, as I have it set up, this works just fine. And again, only a couple lines of code. So again, this one here is pretty easy to set up. Um, the only thing I don't like about it is that you're not using, custom, you're not using the built-in uh, uh, click funnels elements and I like to use those whenever possible. So now we got one last one here and this is our CSS with our background image and again in this case here we're pretty much using a hundred percent CSS code uh, whereas the other ones was all pretty much a hundred percent JavaScript. The only thing that is not CSS is this right here and all this does is this says we're, we're calling our ID image right here, and something's messed up with this. Um, but it's uh, div ID equals image, and all that says is everything up here will apply to this element down here because all we're doing is we're applying a background to this element, and in this case here, we have an ID of image. So up here, we got the hashtag referencing it that it's an ID. And it says image. And in this case here, and this is why I don't necessarily like this one, is you got to know what your aspect ratio is. So in order to keep that image from getting all out of whack, you got to be able to figure out, okay, if I want it to be this width, what is the height I have to be in order to maintain that aspect ratio? Because what we're going to do is we're just going to put a background behind it and you get that aspect ratio off and it's going to get all wonky looking. So then we do exactly the same thing here. We do a background. And in this case here, we use the term URL instead of source. And then over here at the end, we say to center 
the image, center that background image inside of the box that we just created, and then make sure it covers it so that it just basically, everything in there stays right inside of the box. And so uh, now that I say that, because there's cover and there's contain. And now I'm, I'm going to pause for a second just to make sure I'm getting that right. Okay, so I just went into W3 schools. And so what we are using here is cover. Where is it? So we got cover here. And so cover would be is going to resize the image to cover the entire container. So if that means that your aspect ratio is off a little bit, it may end up going a little bit outside the container just in order to be able to fit so that every bit of the inside of that container has the image covering it. Now with contain, what it'll do is it will fill up as much as it can, but you could get like a little black bar on the side or something if the image doesn't quite fit in there properly. So in this case, here, not only do we want to make sure that we have the aspect ratio as close as we can by using cover, if you're off by just a little bit, it will adjust it and keep the uh, image looking okay. But again, in this case here, well, let me finish this up here. So then, then what we say is when you hover over it, that again, all we're going to do is change it out to another image. So again, this is pretty simple, a few more lines of code. But what I don't like, like I said, is you got to figure out what your aspect ratio is, you got to figure out what your sizes are. So I'm not necessarily a huge fan of going this way. So again, my favorite way again, was the call, call back. And um, that again, simplest way to do it. And like I showed here is we can even make it a third image if you wanted to after somebody hovers over it. So once again, that's how all of these work. And I don't know if I showed you these down here at the bottom hovering over them. And the other thing I noticed with this one down here, I don't know if it's a function of the image or not, but it's like the first time you come in every time, it kind of flashes or kind of like, I think what happens is the image completely disappears for a second. So again, this is kind of why I wouldn't go with this direction Okay, I'm going to jump back in here because last night when I got done filming this, I still wasn't happy with the fact that I didn't have a CSS only solution. And so when I woke up this morning, first thing I thought it was, oh, that's how I can do it. And even though I started working on it and I, I really had the idea down, there was just one little bit I was missing. So what would happen is when you came in and you toggled over the image, it would flash back and forth much faster than that even. So it just boom, 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 back and forth because every time I hovered over the one image, of course the other image would pop up, which then I was hovering over the other image, which then meant I wasn't hovering over the first image so that the second image would then disappear again. And no matter what I tried on that, I couldn't figure out a combination in order to get it to work. So I did a little bit more research and I found out that where I was missing it, and I've done this before and I just kind of forgot this, is I can't hover over the images themselves. I have to trigger it by hovering over the column. That's how this thing works. And so let's just take a look here. So first off, you come in and one image uh, goes in front of the other. Now the thing is, is this image is here all of the time. So let's come over to where we have our image in our, our, our editor over here. And we're just going to turn off the code that makes that appear where it is. So I will walk you now back through this. So what we do at first is we say we want this code to be absolutely positioned. And absolutely positioned means we're going to tell it where on the page we want it to be. But when you absolutely position something or you fixed position something, the computer sees it as not being there anymore. So whatever space it was taking up is now available and everything below it will move up into that space. So as soon as we turn that on, you're going to see Russell coming up into that space. Now we haven't told it to move it anywhere. We just told it that we want an absolute position. And so everything below moves up into its space. Now the next thing we're going to say is we want this to be at the top. Okay, so now it's going to pull it up to the top. Now you're saying the top of what? And it's going to be the top of whatever container it is inside of. So right now we have it inside of this call inner container or box or whatever you want to call it. Because like I said earlier, it's just all the code is is really boxes inside of boxes inside of boxes. And so it goes up to, it looks to 
what container is it inside of that also has a position of relative. And I'm pretty sure inside of ClickFunnels, all, all um, elements in here, all containers in here are set to have a uh, position of uh, yeah, position of relative. So is looking to position itself absolutely at the top of the container it is inside of. And so that's exactly what it did. Now, for some reason, because of padding issues and whatnot, it moves over to the left a little bit. So in this case here, I had to put in left of 35 pixels, which means come in 35 pixels from the left side. You could do right you can do right 35 and you come in right 35, or I guess in this case here, I could do right negative 35 and it would pull it 35 to the right instead. And then in order to get started, we want to say display none so that then when we come in, we can trigger this to display. And all that does is says when we hover over this column, again, call enter here, as soon as we hover over that container, that parent container, that we want to trigger that and have it show on the screen. So let me just show you the CSS code for this. You already saw the majority of it. And so this first bit here is just coming in and taking out some of the padding. By taking out this padding, it actually makes the image a little bit larger. You can leave it in, you can take it out, you can move it around. It's all gonna depend on what you want your images to look like. But one of the things I wanted to do to take it out is because as you see, you come in here and it starts to turn on before you get inside. And if I didn't turn that off, it actually starts out here a little bit further even. So I wanted to take out as much of the padding as I could. I could not figure out a way to take out all of the padding though. So you come in and it does that. So now the next thing is what we had already looked at. And so again, we grab the CSS ID selector for that image. And let me show you that. So I have here, let's go into our manage our elements and oh, I already had it turned on. That's right. Let me go back into the CSS. Let me turn the CSS back off again because what we're saying here is display none. So it took out that image. So right here we have the image. And so all it is is you have two image elements, one stacked right on top of each other. So what we're going to do is we're going to hide that uh, second one. And now we'll come back into our CSS and we will take out that comment. And so again, you saw all this code on the other page. And then all we do to trigger it is we come up here again, we say, okay, here's our container. Here is the parent element of the images that we want to affect. And so we're saying when somebody hovers over this parent element that we want to take the image, again, same CSS ID selectors right here. We want to take this image and we want to display block. Display block or display inline block will show it again on the screen. Whereas up here we had display none, which of course takes it away from the screen. So that is it. It's actually quite simple. You see, it's only really a couple lines of code. It was just a matter of coming to the realization that I had to trigger it by hovering over the column, not over the images themselves. That is it for now. If you got any questions, just let me know.